Well, I think she laid it out there. She gave her all. Anyone who'd ever uh, encountered my mother knew that she was relentless. And as much as I'd like to be at home right now, just wallowing in my own grief, I went, cannot do that to her. She worked so hard. She pushed. She got everything that she could out of the 75 years that she lived. Probably double or triple the average person. Certainly at least double me. She could outwork me at every point in life, and she did. So um, I think that the commitment to community service is what she had all of her life. The commitment to excellence, the commitment to inclusivity, and just plain hard work. Whatever you believe in, work hard at it. That's actually what I'm left with. For the rest of my life, I'm going to work harder at whatever it is I choose to be dedicated to. Just do your best. Give your dead level best at whatever it is that you're committed to. Angela, can I ask you a quick question? Condolences uh, for Thank the you. family's loss. There are so many people in this city and in this country who are angry mm -hmm. at what's happened to mm -hmm. your mother. What should people do with that anger and that frustration they're feeling right now? I can only um, tangentially relate to that. I'm still numb. I'm not angry. I'm not, for several days, I wasn't anything. I wasn't anything but numb. Um, but for those who were and are angry, live a better life. Give of yourself to your community to make the whole better. Every effort that each of us gives to living well, to helping our fellow man, will make our society better. And over We've been listening in right here to the daughter, Angela, of a woman named Sadie Roberts Joseph, a community activist, a museum organizer, and a social justice champion. Uh, this woman was found dead inside the trunk of her car on Friday. And her daughter was saying that all she wanted during her lifetime was for her community to come together. And what she wanted in life happened in death. That everyone came together to find out who could potentially be behind her tragic death. And they do have police holding a press conference saying they do have a convicted sex offender in custody. And they are working to determine the details, to piece together this crime. You see the suspect there. He was arrested in 2005 and pled guilty to sex crime offenses and uh, received some information from the family of a young a girl who was roughly about eight years old uh, that he was convicted of raping and pleaded guilty to sexual battery in, in that time, seven years. He was not under probation or parole and happened to be living on the premise of one of the homes that Sadie Roberts Joseph owns. CBS News correspondent Errol Barnett was at the press conference in Baton Rouge. So Errol, what more do we know about the suspect and how exactly were police able to track him down? Well, we know that Ron Jermaine Bell was a registered sex offender and a tenant of Sadie Roberts Joseph's apartments that she was renting out. Police narrowed down the window to about an hour and a half between the time when she was last seen and the first reports came in of a vehicle that ended up having her body inside. Uh, it was quite a somber press conference here in Baton Rouge uh, today because the relatives of uh, Sadie Roberts Joseph, including her daughter, spoke at length about her legacy and about how much they want to continue her legacy of unity um, despite the horrific end to her life which occurred on Friday. Uh, what was interesting is that they mentioned that this was in essence their storm within a storm this past weekend as they frantically tried to figure out uh, why she had gone missing um, just as Tropical Storm Barry was becoming a hurricane and making landfall here in Louisiana. Uh, the police say that there is now 
now no uh, uh, reason for the general public to be fearful and that there will be a number of uh, community events and vigils to honor the legacy of Sadie Roberts Joseph. So it really brings an end to what has been uh, just a, a heart-wrenching uh, weekend for so many people here in Baton Rouge, and that goes well beyond um, her immediate family. Yeah, you talk about beyond her immediate family, her daughter praising the community for really coming together to find this suspect. Why was she such a pillar in Baton Rouge? Well, for decades, uh, Sadie had been uh, a, a force of nature, really. Her daughter said that she would always try twice as hard uh, to bring people together, to open her doors and to offer a hand of assistance to anyone who needed it. In fact, her brother told us that she would always do favors for people and would never see something as, as too difficult or too small for her to chip in and provide. The mayor of Baton Rouge, in fact, stood here and said that Sadie Roberts Joseph is a matriarch of this city. Uh, it, it's quite unusual in, in any uh, horrific crime for the top leaders um, of the city to stand up here with, with family and relatives and all effectively say the same and consistent thing. Uh, one person, a radio personality and producer, even messaged me after my report this morning uh, to say, his name is Tori Henderson, uh, that Sadie Roberts Joseph was his hero. Mm. He went on to say, she's someone that saw something in me and my my sister as kids, her life and legacy will never be forgotten or overlooked on my watch. It's one example of what I've been hearing nonstop while covering this story. Uh, you know, this woman, uh, well into her 70s, had left a real impact here and opened her heart. Her family hopes that that sentiment continues now that she has passed. Yeah, what a horrific ending to uh, an incredible woman of light is what it seems like. Errol, I want to thank you very much for that report.